What's poppin' YouTube? It's your boy Justin, aka Adobe Wong Kenobi, coming to you live and direct from the roof of my house in Guadalajara. Today we're gonna be skipping the fancy tutorials to talk about the fundamentals and in particular organization tips that are gonna help you become a great editor. Now, organization is one of the main pillars for being a strong editor, and I don't think enough people talk about it, so let's jump right into it. So, first things first, we're gonna talk about folder structure. So I work directly from an external hard drive for the most part, all of my active projects live on here. Now it's a good rule of thumb to have an external hard drive to work directly off of. And if you don't have one, try and keep everything organized on your desktop or somewhere that you can easily keep track of. Now inside my hard drive, I've got all of my 2023 folders. And for the most part, they are all color coded. Green is active, yellow is default and so on and so forth. Now inside each project folder, we're gonna have all of these subfolders. Now, if we go into footage, all of my footage is gonna live there. If I go into project files, for example, that's where my Premiere Pro project's gonna be. Screen record's gonna be screen records. Motion is gonna be all of my After Effects projects. Now, this is just a good rule of thumb. Before you do any editing, make sure anything you're gonna need is in these subfolders and organized. So before you do any editing, we're gonna need to offload the footage. So whatever device you use to record, simply open it up in your computer and drag those assets into your organized subfolders. Now, let me show you how to set up your project. So we're gonna go into our 2023 YouTube videos, for example, we'll find our default folder structure, we'll duplicate that, give it a name that's relevant to what we're working on now, and a date if you wanna be super organized. Then we can label it as a green to ensure we know it's active, and then we can open up Premiere Pro. We're gonna give it the same project Project name inside Premiere Pro. And then we are going to locate the subfolder that we just set up for this specific project and save our Premiere Pro project inside the project files folder. Now open up your editing software and we are going to locate all of our subfolders that have assets in them that we need to bring in. So we're just going to select the folders, bring them in and that ensures that they're already organized inside of our project bin. And now we're going to take all of our raw footage and put them into individual sequences to organize those sequences into a main sequences folder. And then we can add subfolders inside like footage sequences so we can differentiate between raw footage timelines and timelines we're actually editing. So this is a great time to do even more organizing inside your editing software. And again, we can even label it based on color to stay further organized. Now we're gonna create a new sequence based on our video needs. We'll give it a relevant name like so, and then we'll put it into our sequences folder to keep it organized. Now I briefly just wanna talk about scratch disks because they're a great way to make sure that you don't lose any unsaved work. So if we go to project settings and scratch disks, you'll see that they're default set to same as project. Now, if we switch those all to documents, that will ensure that our auto saves are saving somewhere other than our hard drive. So if we have a hard drive failure, we have them saved somewhere else. Now, once we've finished our editing and every Everything is done. A good rule of thumb to know that your project was organized is you should be able to compress it, send it to another editor. They should be able to download it, open it, have no missing assets and have no questions about where assets live. Now, what good is an organization video without talking about a little bit of backups? So I work off my hard drive and then I have a secondary hard drive that I back everything up at the end of each work week. And I also back up on Google Drive as well. Now, I also have a secondary master backup that's much bigger and I back everything up on that about once a month. Now, please remember that this is just my workflow and there's plenty of ways to skin a cat. And I promise you, if I didn't show the specific way that you like to work, it doesn't mean that you're doing things wrong. So no need to come at me in the comments. And if you like today's video, make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.